In my Adventures in 3D Printing video series, I'm exploring the world of 3D printers. Creality recently released a new resin desktop printer, the Halo 1 or Halot 1, and they sent one out for me to test. The basic setup of this machine is pretty much the same as any other resin machine. You just need to unpack it, do the satisfactory removal of some plastic protective film, then level the bed, install the main uh, print vat itself that holds the resin, and probably start a test print. But of course, first the mandatory putting the USB stick in backwards and then correcting it, finding out that the other way is correct or not, but you know what I mean. Then on the USB stick supplied with the printer, there is a test file, but that's a pretty weird file, so I'm not going to be using that. Instead, I went over to Cults 3 d to my buddy Slowly's Models page. He has a lot of awesome wheels, even engine parts and other stuff that is way cooler than one of those test prints from the factory on those printers. Now there are of course lots of options out here, many other creators too, so if you know any, please leave a comment down below suggesting your creator with a lot of cool designs. Now there are many people out there who actually are capable of creating their own designs. I myself am not really that capable with 3D modeling software, but luckily I have friends in high places who actually are, so I had some wheels designed for me. So any way you choose, you can go the pre-built route or the build it your own 3D files route. Uh, you then need to move on to a slicer software. In this case, I'm using Lychee or Lychee Slicer, which is a general purpose slicer. It has a free version and also a paid version. I'm just going for the free one as that works perfectly fine. Now, the purpose of the slicer is to import all the files that you want to print, load the settings for the actual printer or the size of print bed that you need, and then start uh, arranging the models and also adding the supports if necessary. Now, you could just print these models flat on the bed, but that might be a little bit harder to remove and some of these areas are floating in the air so they won't print. In that case, you will need to add some supports. If you don't really know what supports are, think of it this way. When you buy a kit, there is a sprue attached to all of the parts and that keeps them all in place and is the way for the plastic to be molded into the part. Now the sprue in this case is called a support and that support is attached to the model itself where it needs support to hang on to that build plate itself. When printing, the parts are pretty much held upside down and printed that way. So it slowly moves out of the uh, resin vat upwards and starts laying down the layers one by one and creating the part that way. So in order for the parts to properly print, we're gonna install some of these supports. I'm gonna start really simply by applying up, uh, some medium supports on the outer rim that keeps it stuck to the print bed itself. And then we are gonna support some of these other areas as well, which are just uh, hanging in thin air otherwise. So we need to support those too, so they don't just fall off and the print of course fails if you do that. So we're gonna do some supports on the center piece or the center hub of the wheel and also on a couple of the spokes where they hang the lowest and therefore they also need these supports. Now for these spokes, since they are very, very thin parts, I'm gonna be using a light support and not going overboard as they don't really need it all that much. I'm just going for the first layer that would touch out of the actual vat itself and basically needs the support because if you don't add this support here, it will fall into nothing and uh, all of the spokes will pretty much fail and you need to start again. So be very cautious of where you are adding these supports and make sure that the necessary pieces are supported, of course, because otherwise the print fails and you can start all over again and have a lot of cleanup to do. Now, of course, at the beginning, uh, when I started printing, I had a lot of fails as I wasn't really taking care of these supports well enough and therefore uh, the prints failed, but now I kind of know what I'm doing. Uh, all honesty, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I have a general idea and I know where to place these supports and have enough of them for the prints not to fail. So with the first wheel now supported, we have three more to do. But in this case, since it is two front wheels and two rear wheels, they are exactly the same front 
and exactly the same for the two rear wheels as well. So I don't need to just do all of these supports again on the other part. I can simply just uh, remove one of these copies and copy the pre-supported one that I just did. So I have the two front ones completely supported. Then uh, redo the supporting on the rear wheel as well. Copy that and then I have the four wheels, two fronts, two rears, and I can pretty much start printing normally. So the rear wheel is now also supported. I just need to copy it once more. So I have two rear wheels and therefore making it a complete set. I'm gonna be arranging them just in the center of the build plate itself, just uh, lay them out a little bit. And then in this case, I'm exporting them to an SDL file and importing them into the Creality Halo box or Halot box, which is the Creality slicer. Now, I personally don't really like this slicer from Creality in all honesty. It's not really easy to use, uh, not very user friendly basically, and uh, it, it kind of sucks. But altogether, if you just do all the supporting and main slicing in the uh, lychee or chidu box or any other slicer you prefer, you will pretty much be fine. You just need to import it into this Halo box uh, and then export it to the correct language, so to speak, for the actual 3D printer, as that is a unique one to this printer. Now, maybe in the future it will be added to the lychee or chidu box slicers, but for now we have to do it this way just export it after adding the supports to an SDL file, import it into the Halo box, and then uh, make sure that it is done on the build plate itself, settle down properly, export it to the correct language for the printer, and then slice the file, insert the USB stick, add the resin, and start your print or pretty much any other way around, add the resin, add the USB stick, then start the print, but pretty much just have it all installed before you, of course, start printing. Now, the resin I'm using for this one is from Resion or God's Aid. They have uh, lots of resins out there. They sent a couple for me to test out specifically for this build too. So I'm gonna be using their white resin for the wheels, printing it at 0.03 millimeters and uh, then just the standard settings for the Creality Halo 1. Uh, it took about one to two hours for the wheels to print. If you're going lower in quality, meaning a thicker layer height, it will take a bit shorter. And if you're going up in quality, a thinner layer height, it will take a lot longer, but that is all up to your personal preference. So about two hours later, the print is completed and I can move on to the cleaning section of this build. And that is done with the Creality UV-1. This is a three-in-one machine, a cleaning, drying, and also curing chamber. For my resin prints, I just like to use isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol alcohol, 99% or the highest percentage you can get. There are many other options out there, but this is simply what I prefer. On the machine itself, there are three options. The top option is for the cleaning, then underneath is the actual drying, and the latest one is the curing stage. And then you can set it at a slow, uh, high, or medium speed, and also uh, add up the time just to make it a bit longer, give it longer cure times, dry times, or actual cleaning times, and pretty much press play. So about five minutes of cleaning later, you can also set it to 10 minutes or two minutes or however long you want, of course, but for these smaller parts, it's about five minutes and that is good enough with a nice clean vat of uh, alcohol. Then take it out, make sure that the remaining alcohol drips off and then start transforming this machine into the actual drying chamber. Therefore, of course, you need to remove the vat with the alcohol, close that up, set that to the side and install the main turn plate on the bottom hang the parts back in there. I just like to leave them onto the build plate itself so that I don't have to touch them at this point and just leave them to cure for another cycle of five to 10 minutes. And after that five to 10 minute dry cycle, these parts are now dried and you can move on to the next stage and that is carefully removing them off of the build plate with a scraper and then placing them back into the chamber again, transforming it into the curing station, uh, start the timer and also set it at the slowest speed. Otherwise I think it dries or it turns around way too fast and it might sling the parts off of the turntable and again, press play. 
Once the five minutes have passed, you could turn these parts around and go for another five minute cycle, or if they are just cured, you can start removing all of the supports. Now these are medium and light supports. They just break off really easily. Some prefer to break these off prior to curing as the resin is a bit softer and therefore makes it easier to remove. Others want to do it after the curing. I personally have tried both and in some cases it doesn't work after the cleaning. So I mainly just do it before cleaning, but in this video I kind of forgot. So I had to do it afterwards. And once that is all completed, the wheels are finished. All of the details that have been put into the 3D design were captured perfectly into the actual 3D printed part. It is a bit hard to see on camera as these parts are really bright white resin, but the quality of this resin is really high. The parts are super strong, even with this super uh, thin style of spoke on here and are perfectly usable for the build. So now the wheels are completed and we need some tires too. Again, going to Cults 3D, my buddy Slowly's models page. There are many other pages out there. Feel free to drop them in the comments again if you know of a good one and share it with the community. Now I like to use uh, some of these files, just testing them out. There are many tires on here. With every wheel set, there is pretty much a different tire available. So there are many to choose from. Again, I'm going to be opening a light cheese slicer. You could also use Chidu Box or any other slicer to do the main slicing first. I'm going to add some tires in here and then set them up on the build plate. There are many different ways of printing the tires, adding the supports, adding no supports, printing them flat on the build plate and so forth. So of course I have tried a couple of different methods of actually printing these tires. This uh, resin that I'm going to be using for the tires is a rubber flexible and it is a bit different than the resins that I'm used to. So it is also a bit different of a method of slicing. Now in this case, the way that I found works best is just to put the tires flat on the build plate itself. I have tried adding supports uh, just like I did with the wheels but the resin was a bit too strong and stuck to the FEP film. That is the film at the bottom of the uh, tank that it is in uh, and therefore ripping them off the supports and leaving you with failed prints. So in this case, I'm just gonna be putting them straight onto the build plate with a nice flat surface surrounding it, making sure that it all touches it, exporting it to an SDL again, importing it into the Halo Box software from Creality to do the final slicing and then move it onto the actual printer itself and pretty much rinse and repeat the same way I did with the wheels itself. Now there are other ways of adding supports and that is done in the 3D modeling software. The final tire that uh, I'm going to be showing a bit further on in the video has a support pre-built into the tire with a nice flat donut or circle that is touching the build plate and a raised edge that is holding the tire to that. And that also worked really well, but it does need to be cut off and leaves a bit of an ugly mark. But uh, again, that is all up to you. There are many ways of adding supports and actually printing the tires themselves, but I found these ways to work best. So for the tires themselves, we could just use the white resin, have some solid pieces, paint them black and be done with it. But instead, we're gonna be using Resion's F96 formula. This is a black rubber-like resin and it prints pretty much the same as the other parts. It prints at about a 0.05 layer height. That is the best layer height and thickness that I've found to work for these. And then uh, just put it into the machine, start the machine, select the file that you wanna print and go ahead the same way pretty much that was done with the wheels or any other parts you're used to printing. So in this case for the tires, I'm using a 0.05 layer height. It takes about an hour for a full set of tires to be printed. The print lines are a bit more visible uh, since they are of course a lot thicker than on the wheels. So take that into consideration. Once the printing is completed, the same method for cleaning, curing, drying, all that stuff is used. I'm using the UV one for that too, pouring it into the alcohol, then drying it with the machine and actually curing it. And then you have a finished piece or in this case, you need to remove that uh, support that was pre-built into the actual file. If you print them directly onto the print bed, you of course don't have these, but that is up to personal preference again. And a lot of people have different methods for doing this. This just worked out for these tires. You are left with a bit of an ugly edge on the inside, so it's not perfect for doing this, but I will keep trying and testing different methods in the future. 
but once that is all completed you have a full wheel and tire set with actual rubber tires. Now the fun thing with the 3D printing is that you can create some aftermarket wheels to fit the standard kit tires. The tire that I'm showing here is the standard tire from the Aventador that I'm building currently and I might replace the wheels that came with the kit with these ones but I would like to know if you guys prefer these Aventador S or SV wheels over the standard wheels that I uh, got with the kit so let me know in the comments down below which one you prefer. The thing that might be the coolest of these 3D printers is that you can just keep on printing and printing until you have met your desires. So just to sum this all up, I really like the Creality Halo 1 and the UV curing, drying and cleaning machine. They work really, really well. Their Creality Slicer is a bit crappy, but there are ways of working around it and not really needing it. And in the future, probably you don't even need it at all if uh, Lychee or Chidu Box updates. And then maybe just add the Halo 1 to the machines with the presets already in the slicing software. And then you can just use one uh, slicing software and not need the Halo Box. But other than that, as you can see, it is really easy to just work your way around it, use the other slicers, import it to the slicer, slice it to the final language of the machine, export it, and you're pretty much good to go. On the resin side of things, I really like that Resion sent out a couple of their resins to test. The white resin works really well, it's really strong, captures a lot of the detail very sharp in there. And of course, also the resin for the rubbers is amazing. In the past, it was really hard to add tires to your 3D printed wheels as you would just need to have them in a hard resin and then paint them black. In this case, you are completely done and the tires are even flexible. So that is a really cool thing to have now and the technology to be available. I will be leaving links to all of these products used down below in the description. So if you are interested or have any questions for the companies themselves, feel free to click on those links, contact the companies, and maybe even get some for your own. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope to see you guys soon in the next one.